This is Chromatic's first podcast. This is the Drupal 7 End of Life podcast. This is uh, basically our attempt to help the community out there who might be dealing with Drupal 7 is end of life, and what the heck does that even mean? So uh, I guess I'm the host. <laughs> we haven't really talked about this. I'm your host, Chris Free. I'm the president over at Chromatic, and this is my dear friend and colleague and business partner, Mark Dorson. Mark, who are you? That's me. I am uh, Chromatic's chief technology officer. And so much more. The most fascinating Thanks, Chris. Among, among us, for sure. Um, so we, we've been talking a lot internally about Drupal 7 and the end of life, and what does that mean? And we've got clients who've got Drupal 7 sites, Drupal 8 sites, Drupal 9 sites, Drupal 10 sites. Um, and what does it mean for those that have Drupal 7 sites? And it seems like there's a lot of ambiguity out there. We've got clients who are, uh, you know, hearing that it's going to be very expensive to move to Drupal 10. Um, it's we need to get on modern PHP and you know modern Drupal. What does that even mean? There isn't a lot of content out there about. Um, like, if I'm still on Drupal 7 come November, what does that mean for me practically and tactically? So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking about November 2023. Uh, right now it is Fast approaching. March 2023. Uh, and the question is, what is life going to be like after Drupal's end of life? So um, it's going to be very different. I think that so much of what, um, you know, makes Drupal valuable and secure um, as a uh, community project is the infrastructure that's been put into place, the security team and their processes. Uh, it's going to be, if you have a Drupal 7 site after it reaches end of life, it's going to be a bit like the Wild West. You're going to be living in a frontier town. Um, there's going to be no um, process for uh, or single place to submit vulnerabilities, no place for those vulnerabilities to be uh, resolved in private before they are announced publicly, uh, no new commits or um, releases, um, so you'll be left trying to find and apply patches for potential vulnerabilities, vet them, are they real, are they actually creating a new vulnerability. Um, it's going to be, I think, a bit overwhelming for folks um, if they are, um, if they understand all of that. And if they don't understand all that, it might be even worse because then there's going to be um, the potential for all those vulnerabilities being in the wild um, and they don't even know about it. And yeah. um, someone could be, um, you know, accessing their site or, um, you know, whatever the vulnerability is exposing, yeah. that could be happening without their knowledge. Well, I'm thinking uh, maybe it'd even be good to go back a step. I want to talk about, like, how does the Drupal community, and namely the Drupal security team, the, the folks on the Drupal.org side of things, how do they make sure that all versions of Drupal, when there's a vulnerability, like, discovered, like, what is that process like? So sort of those folks who may not really understand the situation, to clear that up. But I actually want to go back even further and, and talk about, like, Drupal 7's been around for a long time, like 10 plus years, 12 years, a really long time. We've basically built our whole agency around Drupal 6 into Drupal 7, and, and you know that's like the birth of our agency. So we've been around 16 years. So Drupal 7, its end of life was originally announced like 2019 or something, and every year they've said, oh, we're going to kick, it. we're kind of kicking the can down the road, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to kick the can down the road, we're going to continue support because there's still so many sites on Drupal 7, like last checked, it was like still in the hundreds of thousands are reported to right. Drupal.org. So there's, this is still a big, big issue. There's still a lot of folks running websites that are on Drupal 7. So is it different this time? And then maybe we can talk about like, how, how does that team keep Drupal 7 secure currently and thus will be going away? So is it different, different this time? I think so. Uh, I'm not involved in those internal discussions, but reading the tea leaves, I believe it is different this time. Um, the last time uh, the end of life date was extended was um, in 2022, last year. Um, they made that announcement in February. Um, we are now, so that was about, um, you know, 
nine months before the end of life date. Mm -hmm. We're now past that window. Um, they've given themselves technically until July to announce mm -hmm. an extension, but I get the impression that the longer it goes on, the closer we get to July, it becomes less and less likely. Yeah. I also fear that, um, for many sites, uh, any complicated sites, if, if we wait till July to begin the process of planning and then executing a migration, either to Drupal or some, uh, modern Drupal or to something else, we're not going to finish in time for the end of life date in November. Definitely not. Um, so yes, up to all of, all of those things that's, uh, it's concerning and I believe it's different this time. I believe we're going to, you know, we could talk for probably a whole other episode about, uh, and we might about, um, you know, the Drupal seven end of life and what it means and why we are where we are. Um, but as far as the process and what we're losing, I think the, um, I think it's important to share a little bit because most of it happens away from the public eye by design. Um, there's a Drupal has a all volunteer security team, about 20 talented individuals. Shout out to the Drupal security team. Um, they're amazing. Um, so what happens if someone finds a vulnerability, um, if they are, um, you know, putting their white hat on, they're going and reporting it to the Drupal security team that unlike other issues on an open source project like Drupal does not immediately go public. It, yeah. it stays private, goes to the Drupal security it's team. They, doors. It's not uh, in a public it, form. It's not like any other issue on Drupal.org. It's correct. There's a different process. It, um, you go to security.drupal.org, I believe, and submit there. Um, and they vet it and they contact the relevant people who might be involved in helping to fix it. So if it's core, they're talking to subsystem maintainers. If it's a contrib module, they're talking to um, the maintainers of the module. They pull them into that security issue. Um, and then they develop a fix. Though, you know, those people hopefully develop a fix. And once a fix has been reviewed and is ready for release, then uh, the Drupal security team will coordinate with them uh, in writing and publishing a security advisory, mm -hmm. uh, packaging a release, and going through that whole process, and then announcing it. And, and there's a release schedule for security releases, so people Wednesdays, know right? when to expect. Yep, uh, Wednesdays, so people know when to expect security releases. Um, and so all of that process happens. The the, re the vulnerability is then disclosed only once the fix mm -hmm. is made public. That's the, the most basic overview yeah. of those steps. So all if, of that will go away yeah. after end of life for Drupal so 7. So if you're a person running a Drupal 7 project, just like any other project, yep. this is all happening behind closed doors. Somebody has discovered a vulnerability. They're being a good actor. They report it to the team. The team develops a fix with the maintainer of that subsystem or that module. They, they test it, vet it, and then once they know that this vulnerability has been sort of patched, they both release it and they release an announcement. So if you're running a Drupal 7 site, if I'm understanding this correctly, come November, not only will there not be anywhere to report messages, even if you are somebody who discovered one, like, it doesn't matter. There's, you'd have to go fix it yourself. There's, there's nowhere to go to ask for help. You're just sort of on your own. And that, that assumes someone finds the vulnerability, a good person, a good actor finds the vulnerability. Yes. And I think that's, you know, that's the one piece that doesn't really change from right now. We have, you know, we're yeah. hoping right now that it's a, um, a good actor that finds the vulnerability. But when all of the rest of that process and infrastructure goes away, um, right now as a maintainer of bunch of Drupal sites, we can look to one place to find out about these vulnerabilities. We can follow the mm -hmm. Drupal security team, um, subscribe to their announcements, and on Wednesdays we can look out for uh, potential announcements um, pack and be ready to apply fixes. Without this, uh, anyone who's responsible for a Drupal 7 site is going to uh, be left to figure out, well, who 
who is the person or people to follow mm-hmm. to find out. Hopefully, you know, yeah. I'm I, I'm putting on my I'm pretending I'm responsible for a Drupal Seven site. I hope there will be someone um, or a bunch of people still talking about this, um, but. Now they're no longer vetted in the same way. They're not on the official Drupal security team. Um, and I'm left to do that vetting for myself and hope that I'm finding out about vulnerabilities, you know, with a, a corresponding patch. Yeah. But then you've got to apply about. that patch yourself. It's not like the there, maintainer of that system is going to cut a release that you're going to have to go patch Drupal yourself. Drupal's not going to have any more, any new releases. So you have a hundreds, thousands of files that are now yours to own and maintain in perpetuity until you get off of Drupal 7. And that includes security fixes or bug fixes or new feature enhancements, anything like that. You're just totally on your own. Correct. So uh, there will be no more commits or releases for Drupal 7. Uh, So that's now assuming we find out about a vulnerability, Mm -hmm. find out about a corresponding patch, vet the patch to make sure that it's actually fixing the issue and not yeah. creating new ones. Now we have to track the patch and apply the patch um, to our Drupal site. Uh, even if all that seems palatable, um, now that's just for one uh, security issue. Now, right. fast forward over some period of time, now we've got 10 security patches, 20 security patches. Some of those patches might touch some more code. They might not play well together. How do we right. maintain that? Um, there's no longer going to be a consistent um, version of Drupal. You're not yeah. going to be running 7 point whatever. You're going to be yeah. running the last release of Drupal 7 plus X number of patches. So yeah. um, it's going to be quite a handful. You're reminding me too that like Drupal's code base is one layer of this, but what about like hosting support and the operating system that's running it and which version of PHP, like all of those dominoes might start to fall if I'm thinking about this correctly. Like Drupal 7 is probably able to run on maybe Drupal 8 or, or I'm sorry, PHP 8, but that's not guaranteed. And if we're not cutting new releases as like hosting providers like Pantheon, Platform.sh, Acquia, are they going to continue to support those versions of PHP? Because those, there might be vulnerabilities discovered in those versions of PHP or in the OS that's running that, like if that's some flavor of Linux or, or what have you. It's just not guaranteed that those things are going to continue to be supported, right? Correct. So um, the, like, the, like the onion, like the layers of the onion is still, you know, they're, they're all there, right? Like and the, not just Drupal, but what you're hosting it on, like that could also become an issue that you are now responsible for keeping patched. It's not just Drupal. Right, so the, the biggest um, one layer further down in the, in, the, in the cake here would be PHP. So um, PHP 7.4 is already um, in its end of life state. Mm-hmm. Um, Drupal 7 does have support for PHP 8. I don't know how many, Drupal 7 sites are running on PHP 8. But keep in mind that um, that life is marching onwards for PHP yeah. as well. PHP Let me 8... for a second too, because like, if just because Drupal core has support for Drupal 8 or for PHP 8 plus, that doesn't mean that contrib modules and probably some important ones have adopted support for modern version or more modern versions of PHP. So that could be another sort of fork in the road, right? That's correct. So, you know, you already probably have scenarios where it's probably a lot of Drupal 7 sites that are still on PHP 7.4, which is mm-hmm. already end of life. That um, happened in, um, I feel like that was last year. Last year, at the end of 2022. PHP 8 is already in security fix only mode. PHP 8.0, excuse me. Oh, boy. Um, So we're already on to 8.1 and 8.2 in um, Drupal core, um, in Drupal, the latest version of Drupal 9 and Drupal 10. Um, So that's going to become more of a problem over time. More hosting environments are going to drop support for PHP 7.4 if they even still have them today. Um, And it's going to become a problem even if you're, um, you know, maintaining your own hosting environment. 
you know, Linux distributions are going to stop shipping with these versions. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to become more of a, you know, it's going to take a lot more maintenance uh, yeah. to keep these things running. That feels like an, another reason why, and you mentioned reading the tea leaves, it's a complicated sort of ball, ball of yarn here. Like, it's not just Drupal. Like, the, the folks who are making the decision about whether or not to extend support for Drupal 7, they've got a hard job. It's like there's hundreds of thousands of sites still running Drupal 7 that we know about that are still reporting back to Drupal.org. But then the flip side of that is keeping it secure is getting harder and harder from the other layers of that that onion, right? I almost said lemon, of that onion, which is like the operating system that it's going to be need to be compatible with. Are those secure? And then the versions of PHP as, as the PHP project marches on. Um, so it's just, it's way more complicated. I don't envy those that have to make this decision. And, and I have a hot take, save that for another time, but on on whether or not they should or should not extend support. We'll get to that another time. But um, it's not an enviable place to be. It's like, that's a very difficult decision. And, and it explains why, in part, I think, why it's been kicked down the road a, a couple of years in a row now. Absolutely. So people who want to hear that hot take should subscribe. They should subscribe to this podcast. They should subscribe so they can make sure to catch that. I would add one more thing that we've talked about Drupal Core. You mentioned Contrib. We even talked about PHP and those other layers of the lemon. I'm going to go with layers of the oh, lemon. Layers of the lemon. <laughs> um, well, the one piece that is uh, that we haven't mentioned, one of probably many, but uh, is libraries that are packaged in Drupal Core. So like things jQuery like jQuery is a great example um, many of those versions may have reached end of life. And if even if they're not, even if they're still being uh, patched for security issues, um, with Drupal 7, you know, there will be no more releases. We're not pulling things in with Composer in Drupal 7. You know, we mm-hmm. are doing that in modern Drupal. But, um, you know, those will not be brought in in any way automatically. So everyone will be, again, responsible for figuring yeah. out how to, if those security patches even exist, figuring out how to apply them and integrate them. Yeah, with so Core. to be clear, you're talking about packages that are packages or libraries or projects that are not on Drupal.org. Things that Drupal not 7. Not on Drupal.org, in. things that are packaged currently in Drupal 7, packaged yeah. with Drupal Core. Yeah, with like the. The, the zip file that you download, right? Like Correct. Yeah, in there, jQuery is stuffed in there because you know Drupal 7's AJAX system uses jQuery under the hood or something like right. that. That's the type of stuff you're talking about. Which is back then, Drupal was using other libraries. You know, jQuery being one of them was like the hotness when Drupal 7 came out, and that's really not the hotness anymore. So it's not while it's packaged inside of the versions of Drupal historically in Drupal 7, that's going away. Like, since we're not going to be cutting releases, if there are pack, patches to jQuery, for example, they're not going to be automatically pulled in because Drupal has stopped supporting. It's not cutting any new releases whatsoever. So just like core and contrib modules, folks who are have Drupal 7 sites will have to figure that out as well. There's just so much more work to keep it, keep everything secure. And it's there's really no reliable way to know Am I in an insecure state? Because there's no reliable place to go to find out about security vulnerabilities. You'll have to be the detective and like the fixer, right? You'll have to be the like all 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 the things that are now you currently get quote unquote for free. Sounds awful. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to be in that space, and I can't imagine many other people are looking forward to it. And I imagine that's also why. Some people who um, are still responsible for Drupal 7 sites have been so adamant in the past about extending yeah. um, support. Um, so it's not a it's not an enviable place to be in. But that's why we're here talking about it. Yeah, just you reminded me too that in the last couple of weeks we've been talking about you know our we have clients who still have Drupal 7 sites, and if we were on the hook to maintain these over time, it would be difficult for us. And we have a whole team of some of the best Drupal developers in the world. This was a daunting task for us to consider because how will we know what, like we'll have to stumble upon a, a vulnerability for us to have time to even consider fixing it. Like we'd have to like fall into it. Like That's would, another, another right. layer. I would say what we've talked about so far is really about sort of the logistics of things. And mm-hmm. we yada yada the, 
uh, making a patch part, which yeah. making the patch, uh, creating a patch is not complicated, but it's the, how do we fix this thing yeah. that is complicated? And even on a team with a whole bunch of really smart people, um, there are subsystems of Drupal that, you know, that probably no one on our team has looked at or known, yeah. you know, had any idea about, you, you know, I think many, uh, teams would be lucky to have someone on their team that's an expert or super familiar with one subsystem of mm -hmm. Drupal. Um, that's why in modern Drupal, we have subsystem maintainers and they're experts in that area, but they're not experts in the entire, the entirety of Drupal. Yeah, no one can be, it's thousands of files. Absolutely. And that's, um, you know, one of the great things about how everything is, you know, set up in the Drupal community is that they don't need to be. We have yeah. plenty of people who can be experts in those varied areas. But in this post end of life world, if you were just a team main, trying to keep a Drupal 7 site secure uh, and you discover or hear about a vulnerability and there's not a patch available, you know, it's going to be um, on you to then dig into the code base and attempt to try to figure out like what is the right patch mm -hmm. what is the right change to resolve this and that sounds daunting to me yeah sure does sure does okay so we've covered like what actually happens we've, i think we've done what we've set out to do on this podcast today which is what does it actually mean that drupal 7 is being end of life there's a whole bunch of talk about how to get off of drupal 7 um and of course we're interested in that too and we're going to have a we're going to have a webinar that talks about all the ins and outs of, of you know, getting off of Drupal 7 and what are your options from, you know, get, moving to a modern uh, version of Drupal or moving to something completely different or translating your site into a static version. We've got a webinar coming up, all the options. Um, there'll be a link in the show notes to sign up for that. Um, but I think we've set out to, we've done what we set out to do today. We should wrap this up. Um, episode one in the books. Um, Click that subscribe, smash that subscribe button. Subscribe wherever you get, you get your podcasts and come back for episode two where Chris has promised us a hot take. Ooh, we got a hot take. There's a hot take. Hot chili is coming in. Peace. <laughs>